By now, you should have attempted the lab after reading the lab requirements and maybe watching the intro video. In this review video, I'll go over what the configuration should be and show you how to verify that it works. As always, I organize the content here to match the books, so we're talking about matching content in Volume 1, Part 5, Chapter 18. Now that's Chapter 18 in the current edition, which is the second edition with this green bit on the cover. So there you go. If you had the prior edition, it doesn't have the green bit on the cover, and it was considered Edition 1, and it was one chapter earlier, Chapter 17, in that book. So what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about a configuration or config lab. Here's the link to my blog that talks about the series called Config Labs. It's a bunch of labs, free to anybody. Come there and do the labs. They're CCNA level. Each config lab in the blog post about the lab, there's a figure and requirements and initial config, and you can just read it. You don't even need the videos. But for this lab, there's also an intro video, and there'll be more and more of those over time as I keep building up this YouTube channel. But then, you really do need to do the lab. So download the Cisco Packet Tracer file, use Cisco Packet Tracer, attempt the lab. And then you can look at that same blog page and look at the answer and an explanation and any Cisco Packet Tracer issues that are known. But this video is the review video related to this particular lab. So what lab is it? Well, it's a lab on router on a stick. It's called Router on a Stick Basics 1. Now you can do it now, you can keep repeating it, you can repeat it later. Exploring once you get it working is also a good thing to do. So that's the best practice, if you will. But just do this router on a stick, basics one lab. And where is the lab? Well, the blog page for it is right there at searchskills.com, CLAB120. Now I'm gonna talk about the configuration that solves the lab. Here's a diagram of the lab straight out of the blog post about the lab. And there are requirements in that page and it talks about sub-interfaces and using three consecutive numbers. And it talks about IP addresses to match the scheme you see on the lower part of the diagram. It talks about VLANs separately. And you might wonder, hey, I'm not getting enough information to do the lab here. That's right, this is a review of what you should have already done. And if you're like, well, I need more background, read the lab on the blog site and or watch the intro video that takes you through all these requirements, all right? The config is derived from those requirements, so I've talked through all that before. I'm not going to repeat it here. I'm gonna show you the config that's the result of that. So check that, it should be a card showing up on your screen right now and linked in the description. So what do we have here? The requirements said use three consecutive sub-interface numbers and to use only sub-interfaces, that is not the physical interface. I picked dot one, dot two, and dot three. Honestly, I don't care which sub-interface numbers you use because they don't really matter, but it would be nice if you use three consecutive ones. And I'm repeating that config here in the next PowerPoint slide that I'm recording from. But I've added the IP address command under each sub-interface. Now the requirements had told us use the numerically first address in each subnet. And we had broken down the subnets and rearranged it so we see subnet ID 10.0.2.0, 10.0.3.0, 10.0.4.0. And it's really easy to figure out the numerically first IP address in a subnet. You just add one in the fourth octet. So there's the router IP address in the first subnet, router IP address in the second subnet, router IP address in the third one. And you see those configured over here on the left. And by the way, the lab also told us to use this same nice easy mask in each subnet. Now that's configured on the router. That's part of the router on a stick configuration. But there's a little bit more you have to do because so far there's nothing in there about VLAN trunking. So the additional part of the config that basically tells the router you're using VLAN trunking is to add these encapsulation.1q commands under each sub-interface, which tells it, hey, you're using trunking. Generate headers before sending frames that have a .1q header. Expect to receive frames that have a .1q header. We identify the VLAN IDs as 1, 20, and 30. Again, if you haven't read the lab or haven't watched the intro video, you wouldn't have heard about which VLAN IDs, but that analysis revealed VLAN 1, 20, and 30 
or the VLAN IDs to use in order. So here we go, VLAN 1, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30. And that same analysis in the intro video told us that VLAN 1 is the native VLAN, so when you're configuring the native VLAN on a sub interface for router on a stick, you need this native keyword in the encapsulation command. Whew, that's a lot, huh? So that's the complete router config for router on a stick in this design. Next up, let's talk about the LAN switch side. You have to configure both the router and the switch to get router on a stick working here. Now the initial config per the lab included the VLAN 20 and VLAN 30 commands to create the VLANs. And you should know from your prior reading that VLAN 1, you can't delete it, so it's always there. So the three VLANs we care about are already configured in the switch. So you didn't have to add that configuration. It wasn't harmful if you chose to configure it, but it was already there. Then under interface gigabit ethernet 111 on the switch, there was no configuration, but there were some meaningful defaults there. In fact, the idea that this switch defaults to native VLAN 1 is because of this default command setting switch port trunk native VLAN 1. So that's how for the router R1 router on a stick config, we had to accommodate things with that native keyword. It's because VLAN 1 defaults to be the native VLAN on the switch side. All right, so that's some important stuff in, in the initial and default config. Now, what do you have to configure on the switch? Well, VLAN 20 and 30 were actually already configured, so you really don't need to add those, but you do need to make sure the switch port trunks, and it doesn't by default, and it has to be configured to statically trunk, that is not to dynamically negotiate trunking. So simply add switch port mode trunk under the interface, and that completes the switch config. Once you feel like you understand this lab and are happy with the configuration, if you want an additional challenge, here's the idea. When you're finished, remove the sub-interface gig 0 slash 1.1, the one with the native VLAN configured, and instead configure the native VLAN details under the physical interface. All right, that's just an alternate way to configure for the native VLAN. And if you do that, tell me in the comments that you've done that. But start it with some notice that that's what you're doing. Like, hey, Wendell, here's my challenge answer. And then you can just copy and paste your solution in there, and I'll take a look. All right? So what I did was open the packet tracer file downloaded from the blog, and then I just plugged in all the config commands we talked about. And I'm not going to show you the process of typing them in. It's just typing practice to type those in. You could literally copy and paste them from the blog post, all right? But now that they're in there, how do you test and verify? Well, I'll do a show run and show you the commands are there. But in addition to that, you can do some ping and trace routes from those PCs and see if it works. It should once you've configured correctly. And on the router, show VLANs is the command, that's VLANs, plural, that shows details about router on a stick configuration. Show IP route connected should show you connected routes for all your router on a stick sub interfaces. On the switch, you can make sure that this interface is indeed trunking. So those are all good things to do, but proof of the pudding is can the devices ping each other. When you do that, here are the IP addresses for reference, and I'll show you those as we go through the lab. All right, let's jump into it. So I've opened Cisco Packet Tracer, and I've opened a Packet Tracer file that includes all the answer configuration already loaded in. All right, so I've already done a show run. I'm going to repeat it here. And if I just hit the space bar a few times, there's nothing new there, but we do get down to the gig 0 slash 1 interface on the router, this bottom interface there. And we see the same configuration we just saw in the PowerPoint slides, right? We see the dot 1 and the dot 2 and the dot 3 sub interfaces. We see all these encapsulation dot 1q commands. We see the same VLAN IDs we just talked about, and we see the IP addresses. We've also got that native keyword up there with VLAN ID 1 because that's our native VLAN. And that's the sum total of the router on a stick configuration up on router R1. Then on switch 1, there we go. If I repeat the show running config command there and hit the space bar a few times, I get a reminder that VLAN 20 and 30 are configured. Those were pre-configured as it turns out. 
And then if you forgot, it's gigabit 111. That's the one that's connected up to router R1. And there's the lonely switch port mode trunk subcommand that was the only one needed. Notice no dynamic negotiation, no switch port mode dynamic something. It's switch port mode trunk. So the configuration turns out to be relatively simple after all this noise about figuring it out. So let's do some uh, ping commands. So we get into PC2 and tap command prompt. And as you can see, I was messing around a little bit earlier with it. So let's do a trace route to PC1's IP address, 10.1.1.100. And it says, hmm. Tracing the route, and it looks like I had a trace route command saved. So there's a trace route, and the trace route worked. And it shows my first hop address as 10.0.2.1. Now, does that look familiar a little bit? It ought to. That's one of the router on a stick IP addresses we just configured. PC2's default router is router R1 in this router on a stick configuration that we just used. Now, the ping, of course, to the same address will work. So there you go, there's the working ping. How about a ping over to PC4 whose address is 10.04.100. It'll fail a few times and then it'll start working. Why does it fail? Because we were waiting, waiting for some ARP tables to fill up. If we do it again, all the pings work. And then we think, all right, well, what about a trace route? To PC4. Well, there we go again. The first router is again our default gateway, 10021, which is the router's router on a stick address in this design. All right, so we've proved that the pings work. How about some basic verification commands in? So we're back to router R1, and the best command to verify router on a stick is show VLANs, and alas, Packet Tracer doesn't support it. So on the exam, do a show VLANs and check it out if you've got a router on a stick config that you want to dig further in. Show, show running config is the best command. Show VLANs would be the next best. And in real life, show VLANs as well. But if you want to make sure that your router has connected routes for those sub interfaces, that's a good second place. So how about show IP route connected? And there we see the subnets for subinterface 1, subinterface 2, subinterface 3, and this is the pre-configured subnet off of that interface at the top of the diagram where PC1 sits. All right, that should take us through the router verification and just a few things on the switch. We just need to make sure trunking is working on the switch. Now, I can I can believe it because all the pings work. But how do you verify trunking? Well, a couple of great commands for that. Show it the show int, give it the interface ID switch port, shows us the status. It shows us administrative trunking and operational mode. Administrative mode is what's configured. Operational mode is what's actually happening right now. And what we want is this operational mode to say trunk and it does, so that's confirmation. The other command show, oops. Show interfaces trunk. If it shows the interface ID in the list here, which it does, gig 111, then that confirms that trunking is enabled on that interface. So that wraps up the verification then to show you that indeed this router on a stick config is really working. I hope you enjoyed this Config Lab review. Hope you enjoyed the Config Lab. Tell me what you think of the lab and of the review video that goes with it. As always, click subscribe and the bell if you're new to the channel. Would love to have you hang out with us and get as much as you can of your CCA studies out of this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll talk to you later.